Praise the name of the Lord. Everybody say it. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. Let's, put, let's, let's say it like this. This is my Bible. Is my Hear me, devil. Hear me, I've got a Bible in my hand. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Tonight I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed, seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated and open to Romans chapter 8 again. Amen. I'm going to, listen, I've got 14 things in here. I'm going to read them to you tonight, and then I'll be through with this. Uh, but I'm going, to, I'm going to get through them. I, I want to show you what the whole, this is the year of the Holy Ghost. And fire. You know, it gets cold in here, so we need to fire the Holy Ghost. Amen. I better read some scripture before I start talking because I get to talking and then I don't get back to the scripture. Uh, but I, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to start out with number one and we'll give you all 14. Okay. Uh, we'll be here till about one o'clock in the morning, so just, uh, we'll do it fast. Romans chapter eight. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Say, I'm in Christ. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the, for the Spirit of the life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, I want to talk, talk about those two things and then go on. But I want you to look at me and we'll look back there in a moment. This is the year when we're going to learn more about the Holy Ghost who is on the earth in charge of the church to empower the church, to enlighten the church, to inform the church. We're going to learn more about the Holy Ghost and fire. John said, I indeed baptize you with water, but he that comes after me, I'm not worthy to loose his sandals. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. He talks about the fire burning up the chaff. We need the fire of the Holy Ghost to burn out the sinful tendencies in our lives. We need to burn out that social drinking. We need to burn out that, uh, uh, you know, that uh, uh, partying that wants to get with the world. We need to burn out all those little words that come out of our mouths that are not conducive to building faith. We need to burn out all kinds of sin and worldliness, the Holy Ghost and fire. Everybody shout fire. fire. See, the fire will burn up the chaff and will purify the gold. And we want the fire. We want the fire. And uh, everybody shout, I want, the fire. I want the fire. And you know, we had these people from Fuller Theological Seminary come here Sunday. Did y'all see them? Uh, how many of you realized they were here? And there were about eight or, eight or ten of them here. And they, they, they were Presbyterians. Now, Dr. Lycan over here, he's a former Presbyterian. He's thawed out, though, now. He's not God's frozen. He's, he's God chosen now. Wave your hand, Dr. Lackin, so they'll know who you are. There he is. He leads the singing, you know, as long as we go along. Great attorney, you know, but uh, just, just filled with the Holy Ghost, married to the, I don't know how he got that pretty woman, but I tell you, he got her, and he still got her, and he's still living with her, and, and uh, I believe they're going to make it. Praise the name of the Lord. But see, all these people were Presbyterians. They had never seen anything like, we had the wildest service Sunday. I mean, we danced, we shouted, we prophesied, and we, uh, we took up offerings, we showed missionary tapes, everything. And, and uh, then they were to come back, uh, was it today? Two, no, Tuesday, Tuesday they were here. They would all come back and have a conference. So they came back about two o'clock, and we were in my office about, about two hours. And they wanted to know about this. I said, the Holy Ghost. They said, well, what makes this happen? I said, the Holy Ghost. And they said, well, why, why, how come this happened? I said, the Holy Ghost. Why did those people come down there and talk like they did? That, is that what you call prophecy? I said, yeah, that's the Holy Ghost. And, and, and they said, well, well, how's the church run? I said, the Holy Ghost. I, I said, we have no board in this church. A few board people get up and leave once in a while. But, but I said, we have, no board. we have no boards. We follow the Holy Ghost. We believe God can lead us by the Holy Ghost. 
And uh, so uh, anyway, one of them said, uh, well, you know, he, this fellow here, he has a bad back. Would you pray for him? So his leg was shorter, and you know God's going to grow out shorter. I said, all, all y'all get around here and watch this. And his leg grew out, and his back got healed, you know. And so now here, here they are standing there. And I said, now, I, I know y'all don't know many songs, but as Presbyterians, surely you know a song that has one word, which is called Hallelujah. So I said, let's lift our hands and sing hallelujah and, and let's pray. And I'm going to believe every one of you going to start talking in tongues. <laughs> so we sang hallelujah a few times. I said, now sing it in tongues. I began to lay hands on them and every one of them but one started talking in tongues. <laughs> Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. Can I have an Amen. amen. I'll tell you, it's wonderful to see God's power working. Amen. It's a new day. Amen. And uh, they wanted to know, you know, all about whether we charted things or not. And, and of course, uh, Justin, he charts a lot of things. I said, no, I don't chart anything. I said, I just preach. He said, well, how do you know who's coming? I said, I don't. I said, I just preach to those that come. And he said, well, what about all the people that get saved? And I said, well, we just follow up the best we can. Believe God, they'll stay with us. And they said, well, do they just have to come one, to, one, one year? Is that what you meant by that? Do you only have to come one year to church? I said, no, that isn't what I mean. I mean, if you'll give me one year, you'll stick. If I can't, if I can't build you up in one year. So anyway, we got you know, all those questions. You know, they, we had a good time. They went out speaking in tongues. And it's just wonderful to have the Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost, every, I explained to them, when you're born again, every Christian has the Holy Spirit in regeneration. But now when you get the baptism in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost rises up. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And you'll start talking in other languages. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, then that's, that's the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And you'll receive power after, not when, after. You've got to learn how to yield in to the Holy Ghost. And you're put into a dimension of supernatural power that you've never touched in all of your life. Could I have an amen? Amen. Now, this chapter is written by, to, to Spirit-filled people and tells you all the things, some of the things, not all of them, but some of the things the Holy Spirit does. He said, now, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Number one, we're to walk after the Spirit and walk without condemnation. Could I have an amen? amen. Now, the second one says that uh, the law of the Spirit of life, the Spirit of life, everybody say the Spirit of life. See, the Holy Ghost is the spirit of life. He's not the spirit of death. The, the, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. See, it's, it's all to those who are in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Now look up here just a moment. You know, the law of sin and death is that tendency to want to sin whether you uh, want to or not. It's that tendency that you just practice sin. But thank God the Holy Ghost comes in and he breaks the power of the law of sin and death. And you don't have to obey the flesh anymore. The law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath broken the law of sin and death. And then the number three is found in uh, chapter uh, verse 4 that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit now now you know folks if you walk after the holy ghost leadership on the inside of you you will not fail to live the right kind of life you don't, have to, you don't have to struggle and say, oh, I'm just, a, I'm just afraid today. I can't live according to God's laws. No, the Holy Ghost in you will help you to live right. I mean, uh, there, there's just no, no problem. Uh, you know, Terry, Terry, stand up. Terry, Terry used to, he could not smile. This man could not smile. <laughs> turn around, look at him now. He couldn't smile. And turn, turn around, look at him, we're good. He couldn't smile. I'm talking about he, he tell testifies. He could not smile. Now he can't quit stop, uh, smiling. He smiles all the time. What is it? It's the Holy Ghost in him. Thank God. Broken the spirit of, uh, of the loss uh, of death and, and gave him the right and the privilege of living the right kind of life. 
Hallelujah. He goes everywhere spreading the gospel. Amen. Well, the Holy Ghost is in us to do that. And then, uh, then number four is in uh, ch- verse five. And they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. You know the world, that's the way the world is. The world, uh, the world didn't write any articles uh, or have any programs about our, our spots. The world, world's not interested in what we're doing. The world is interested in what they're doing. Amen. If you, those that are after the flesh, mind the things of the flesh. But thank God they that are after the Spirit, mind the things of the Spirit. Thank God we got our minds on what the Holy Ghost wants. We mind the Holy Ghost. Did your mother ever say, you better mind me? Mother used to say to me, John, you better mind me. I got a whipping laid up for you. I never could find out where she laid it. I'd have gotten it. She, we had a persimmon tree. Let me tell you something. Don't grow any persimmon trees. They make the best switches in all the world. But, but we don't, we, we ought to mind our parents, but we ought to mind the Holy Ghost. You know, when we get a check on the inside of us, we ought to stop and say, hey, wait a minute, I'm not going to do that. I told those, those Presbyterians about how I get up because these young preachers were preaching all these, I mean, building all these big churches and I jumped up and I, y'all remember this night, we're going to build a big church. Because, you know, the devil said to me, you're getting too old and all these young preachers building these big churches around you, you better get up and build something quick. And two weeks later, I'd get up and say, hey, I made a mistake. Y'all remember that? And uh, some of you weren't here then. And those Presbyterians said, you mean you admitted you made a mistake in public? I said, man, I'm the world's champion at that. I said, I don't mind. I don't even mind admitting that I made it. I said, if I feel a check in my spirit, I say so. When you feel God telling you not to do something, stop doing it. Stop doing it. See, we want to mind the things. We want to mind the things of the spirit. Could I have an Amen. But now notice, here's why, thank God we have the Holy Ghost. Verse six uh, is, is uh, number five. For to be carnally or fleshly minded is death. You can die an early death. I'm telling you folks, you can, you can get in trouble. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Shout life and peace. Life. See, well, we ought to mind the Holy Ghost so we can have life and peace. Well, now, now you just look at me. You wouldn't believe I was 40 years old, would you? No, 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 no. You, you wouldn't believe that. Man alive. No, I'm telling you, I got life and peace. I got life and peace. In spite of the fact that I have no food at home and, and, and we have no meals at home, I somehow am surviving. <laughs> and I may not be going home tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you see, to be carnally minded, they're living in the flesh. Listen, some Christians live after the flesh and they die early deaths. They do. They die early deaths. I'm not saying everybody that now died early was doing that. I'm not saying that. I won't put any condemnation on anybody. But I'm telling you, folks, if I just get out here and say, well, I'm going to do what my flesh wants to do, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do that, I'm telling you, I wouldn't be here for long. I'm going I'm I'm to follow the Holy Ghost and have life and peace. Everybody shout life and peace. peace. Say eternal life life. and peace that passes all understanding. understanding. That's what the Holy Ghost brings to you. Now, number number six is found in uh, verse nine. But we are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of God, Christ, he is none of his. Now, notice down here in the next verse. And if Christ be in you, by the Spirit of Christ being in you, you're none of His, it means Christ is in you. Now, see, that doesn't mean the baptism in the Holy Ghost. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of His. And if Christ be in you, you see that? When you're born again, Christ is in you and the Spirit is in you like that. You're none of His unless the Holy Ghost is in you like that. But that doesn't mean that you have the baptism in the Holy Ghost. When it says the Spirit of Christ is in you, it means Christ is in your heart. Do you see that in those two scriptures? It's very clear. 
If Christ be in you, he's talking about if you have not the Spirit of Christ, and if you're not born of the Spirit and Christ does not live in you by the Holy Ghost, you are none of His. You're none of His. But notice here it says, and, um, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if the Spirit of God dwell in you. In other words, the Holy Ghost is in you. You don't have to live in the flesh. Could I have an Amen. You, you, have, you live in a different dimension than this world lives in. That's the reason the world, the world doesn't even understand you. Jesus said, if the world hates you, remember it hated me before it hated you. You are not of this world, even as I'm not of this world. Hey, our citizenship is in outer space. Amen. We're spacemen and women walking around here. Glory be to God. And NASA didn't bring us in or out. I'm telling you. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. And now number, um, number, number seven. Number six, number seven. It says, and if Christ be in you, that's verse 10, verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. In other words, the Holy Ghost makes you to realize your spirit is alive because you have been made righteous. And, and because your spirit has been made totally righteous, that's the only reason you're going to heaven. And your body is dead. That is, you're not going to listen to your body. You're not going to listen. You, you deaden the things of your body. And uh, we, the Spirit of God makes us to know we have been made righteous. We have that life because of the Holy Ghost. And then number eight, but if the Spirit of Him that, dwell, that, that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Now that, that's talking about the baptism in the Holy Ghost. That's talking about being born of the Spirit. That's talking about the fullness of the Spirit. That's talking about the working of the Spirit. So, now, if the Spirit of Him that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall make alive or quicken or heal or deliver your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwells in you. How does God heal our bodies? He does it by the Holy Ghost. He'll quicken our mortal body. I, I, I know that in a sense that may mean the resurrection. But he said, if the spirit of him that dwell, that dwell to Jesus dwell in you. Well, you know, when we die and our bodies burn the ground, the Holy Ghost is not dwelling in that body anymore. There may be some residue of power in there, like in the bones of Elisha. But uh, the spirit of God doesn't dwell in dead bodies. He's talking about right now. If the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, that same resurrection life We'll quicken your heart. We'll quicken your lungs. We'll quicken your knees. We'll kick a, quicken your eyes and your ears and put resurrection life in you by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory be to God. That's the reason we need the Holy Ghost and fire. Yeah. Holy Ghost and fire. I believe the Holy Ghost can keep us young. Yeah. Amen. I believe the Holy Ghost can keep our eyes seeing. I use glasses once in a while to read a long time, but I'm amazed how good I can see. Uh, and notice says I can't hear too well, but I can hear everything I want to hear. <laughs> Sometimes Dodie talks to me and I'm way back in my closet and I don't answer because, I, you know, I just don't answer. She said, darling, you, 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 need, you need to clean out your ears. You don't hear. I don't ever tell her. Don't tell her I said this. I, I hear her well. I am not interested in being disturbed. <laughs> don't tell Dodie I said that. He quickens our mortal body. There's quickening power, living power on the inside of us. And God who raises the dead can raise our dead members to life again. Can I have an amen? amen. That's the reason your knee back there is going to be all right. Resurrection power of God in your knees. And I'll tell you, uh, if your rheumatoid arthritis is trying to get a hold of you, just kick it out. Just let the Holy Ghost come on you and just dance it out. 
Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Resurrection life. That's what the Holy Ghost does. Say, He dwells in me. He dwells in me. And that was number what? Eight. Eight. This is number nine. If you live after the flesh, you'll die. He's telling those Christians, said, listen, if you want to live, don't live after the flesh. You live after the flesh, you'll die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify, and the Living Bible says, crush to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. In other words, by the power of the Holy Ghost, you can mortify. That's where we get, uh, you know, a mortician, dealing with dead people. You can, I like the word crush. You can, by the power of the Holy Ghost, crush the appetites of the flesh. I tell you, there's a lot of lust in the world. Lust of the flesh. Lusting after other people. The Holy Ghost can help you crush lust that rises up in you. A lot of lust for, for thing, the carnal things of this world. You can crush the desires of your flesh. Now that desire for cocaine or, or drugs or alcohol or whatever it is. That comes. You can, by the Holy Ghost, crush you can put to death. You can deaden the things that rise up against you. Amen. You, you have the power to do it. You don't have to get anybody to pray for you. You can do it yourself. You got the power of the Holy Ghost. Could I have an amen? amen. Number what? Number 10, verse 14. Where as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. The Holy Ghost is in you to lead you. I told those Presbyterians. I said, I don't take any credit for this church. Thousands of people have come here. I, I showed them that, Lord showed them that little tiny church over there, seat 234. I said, I'll tell you what John Osteen could do. I couldn't even fill that church up. I couldn't even fill that church. 234 people in the seat, I couldn't even get it full. I couldn't get it full with my magnetic personality, <laughs> with my glowing health and strength. Being tall, dark, and handsome. Well, tall, light, and handsome. I said, I couldn't even fill that up. I said, when I came back from the Philippines, Dodie said, darling, you just wait till Houston knows you're back. This place will be filled. Well, Houston heard darling was back and Houston didn't care. In fact, I advertised that Houston darling has arrived and Houston didn't come. No, it's not John Osteen. I begin to tell them, it's the power of the Holy Ghost. I said, I begin to follow the Holy Ghost as many as are led by the Spirit. I said, pastors need to be led not by boards of businessmen. They need to be led by the Holy Ghost. And every Christian needs to be led by the Holy Ghost. Don't. Be led by your flesh. Well, she just looks pretty to me. He just looks handsome to me. And my flesh, well, kill your flesh. I mean, let the Holy Ghost rise up on inside of you. Talk in tongues a while and dance in the Holy Ghost. And that little thing that looks so pretty will begin to look ugly. <laughs> Be led by the Holy Ghost. Let God, let the Holy Ghost direct your ways. That's what he's in you for. The pillar of fire by night and the cloud by day. That's how the Israelites followed. But that pillar of fire on the day of Pentecost divided up and became down in tongues of fire and went on the inside of us. Now the pillar of fire is on the inside of us. All we have to do is just get up and follow the Holy Ghost. Just follow that, those inclinations, that, those desires on the inside. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. Children of God. And then number 11, verse 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Daddy, 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 now, Abba, Father. You have not received a spirit that will bring you into bondage. I preached on that. You have not received a spirit of fear. 
the Holy Ghost is not a spirit of bondage and a spirit of fear. Could I have an amen? amen. The Holy Spirit is, is a spirit of liberty and faith. And uh, so if you have fear and condemnation and bondage, it's not the Holy Ghost bringing you into that. And I preached on all those religious rules. I'm not going to do that again. Number 12. The Spirit Himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Now this is a very important scripture because of the mind sciences. There are many people in churches in this town that believe real close to what we believe about confession and saying and positive thinking and all of that, you know. But they are in the mind sciences. And they'll usually say, you know, you know, talking about God talking to their mind. And uh, they talk about uh, energy and uh, vibrations. Well, you know, I had some vibrations about you today. And those are new, those are, those are, those are terms you ought not to use. We don't believe in vibrations. We believe in the Holy Ghost. We don't need, somebody said, oh, those, the vibes are right. Oh, you better stay away from the vibes. Amen. Now, now listen carefully. The Spirit Himself beareth witness with our spirit. The Holy Ghost, God, does not talk to your mind. God does not talk to your mind. There was a man in this, in this church. He's not here tonight, but he still comes to this church. He told me, he said, I keep getting in my mind to do this. A message comes to my mind to do this. A message comes to my mind to do this. I wanted to tell him, but I didn't tell him. I should have told him then. But you know, you just not, don't want to jump down people's throats. He said, I, I'm going into this business. I'm going into this business. My mind is telling me I'm getting this message from God in my mind to do this. And uh, he went into the business and lost thousands of dollars. And uh, I shouldn't. But it's not my business, you know. But maybe I should have spoken up. But I'm not, I'm not always just telling people how to run their lives. But now that man knows, and I told him later, I said, God does not speak to your mind. I wanted to tell you that. If God wants to give you a message, he won't give your carnal mind that message. He will talk to your spirit. His spirit bears witness with our spirit. The first communication God has with a saved person is his spirit talks to our spirit, assuring us we are the sons and daughters of God. And if he starts talking there, he's going to continue talking there. Now your mind can pick it up out of your spirit, you see. You understand this? Don't get your messages from your mind. Get your message from, uh, from, from, from your spirit. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Aren't you glad you know inside that you're a child of God? That's number 12. Number 13. Verse 23. And not only they, but we also ourselves which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of the body. The Holy Ghost is the first fruits of what God wants to give us. Now, what, another, another way of putting that, it is the down payment. The earnest. Everybody say earnest. earnest. The earnest. The, 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 the down payment. The first fruits. Have you ever bought in property and, and you put down what kind of money? Earnest money. And when you put down that earnest money, you're saying, I guarantee I am going to buy this property. I legally guarantee with this $10,000 check of earnest money, I am going to buy this property. And if you go back on your word, guess what you lose? The Holy Ghost is God's earnest money. 
You think God's going to lose his earnest money? God's not going to lose his earnest money. I'm telling you, God has put the Holy Ghost in us to give us an assurance. I'm so sure you're going to live right. I'm so sure you're going to make it to heaven. I'm going to put my Holy Ghost in you as the earnest money down payment and to give you an assurance that one day you're going to walk on the streets of gold. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, don't panic. Go ahead and clap. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And then number 14 is found in verse 25, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, our weaknesses. For we know not what to pray for as we ought. Now notice there, we know what to pray for, but we do not, do not know how we ought to pray about it. Many times, we know the specific thing we need to pray for, but we do not know exactly how to pray for it. Isn't that right? We do not know, likewise the Spirit also helps our infirmities, our inabilities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us, with groanings which cannot be uttered. And one translation says, in, a, in your articulate speech, in your natural language. For he that searcheth the hearts, see God didn't search your mind. He that searcheth the hearts, look up here a minute. David said, Lord, look deep within my heart and point out anything in me that makes you sad. I tell you folks, you ought to stay out of the world. You ought not stop doing things that make the Holy Ghost sad. He that searcheth the hearts. You know the reason our children live for God is because they know that mind and daughter's hearts are pure before God. We're not perfect, but we've kept our hearts right. And they know that. You couldn't be down of them with a ball bat. They've watched us all through the years. We never made them go to church. We let God search our hearts and, and try to live the right kind of life. We haven't been perfect, but we let God search our hearts. He that searcheth the heart. If God searched your heart right now, what would he find in there? Would he hear you say it? I wish you'd shut up. I don't believe anybody here have him say that. Hear him in, I believe he'd see people saying, God, I, I want to live better. Lord, I, I want to do right. Lord, I'm sorry for anything I've ever done. Lord, you know my heart. I may fall, but I fall in the right direction. Lord, I, I want to help evangelize the world. I want to, I want to give myself more to you. Lord, I, I want to live better for you. I want to, I want to prosper so I can uh, help, help the world know about you. He, God who searches the hearts. He knows every lust you have in your heart. He knows every dream you have in your heart. He who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. In other words, the Holy Ghost, as we pray in English or our own natural tongue, he comes to meet our prayer and he begins to intercede according to the will of God. And uh, sometime you'll be praying and the Spirit of God will come upon you. You don't know that somebody somewhere in a foreign land or a distant city or someplace else needs prayer. And, and, and you'll be interceding for them according to the will of God. One morning I got up about uh, 4 o'clock in the morning, 4, 30, something like that. And I went to my office out where Ruthie lives now, but I quit giving you a dress. So everybody won't know where you live. And, uh, but anyway, I went in my little office out there. And I knelt down and I started praying in English. And then I started praying in tongues. And intercession came on me. And I just began to pray and to pray and to pray. And, and I knew that God had me praying in the will of God for somebody. 
And so I said, God, for whom am I praying? Who is it? And I saw come up before me a preacher's face. And while I was on my knees, this man was in a distant city. I knew his number. I reached over on my knees and I picked up the telephone. And with the light, I dialed the number. And his phone rang in his home. His wife picked it up. And I said, this is Brother Osteen in Houston. I have a burden for prayer. What's happening? And she began to cry. She said, oh, Brother Osteen, my husband is just driving out the, out the driveway. He's packed his things. He's leaving me. He's going to live with somebody else. Pray, pray, pray. God knew. God knew. He did all he could. He put it on my heart. It may be many other hearts. That man was a good man, but the devil got a hold of him. And he left his wife, and he married this other woman, and he died. You can die early doing things like that. I believe he went to heaven. I believe, I believe, I believe he was sorry for what he did. But what I'm saying is, when you're praying, you never know for whom you're praying. The Spirit himself maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Pray much in prayer about your finances. Pray much in prayer about your health. Pray much in prayer by the, by the Holy Ghost for your children and your family. For God's Holy Spirit knows how to pray for you according to the will of God. Aren't you glad you got the Holy Ghost? Aren't you glad you got a helper? Yeah. Amen. Aren't you glad I got through 14 points? Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Yeah. Amen. I, I went a little over, but that's all right. The world's not going to come to an end. Yeah. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer.